What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here, back again with another Tottenham update. And the World Cup is not even 48 hours old. And Tottenham Doomongers <laughs> are back in full <laughs> flight. And the transfer news is uh, the rumor mill is uh, at the ready. And who better to talk through these circumstances than the great Brian Daigle is in the house in. Um, he's uh, covering for my brother Ben who is yep. still under the weather hopefully he'll be back tomorrow um, but Brian we'll get into these stories and I want to know your opinions because a lot has been made a lot of chatter in fact Enoch out is trending right now on Twitter and we're going to tell you exactly why um, that is the case so the story there's an article from The Athletic that was released this morning and it is about Antonio Conte and his protracted contract <laughs> talks. And it states, Tottenham have started contract talks with Antonio Conte back in October and were confident of agreeing a deal. But that has slightly changed and now sources close to key figures in the negotiation sound less optimistic than they did earlier in the season. It says that... Negoti it says that um, they are still optimistic that a deal can be struck with Antonio Conte, but they are far less um, optimistic than they were um, at the beginning, or near earlier in the season, maybe before the World Cup. And um, they are a bit less optimistic about the chances of a deal being reached. Uh, according to Jack Pibrick, indications are that Tottenham are not going to throw money around in the transfer market in January. Levy has been clear with Conte in a number of private, uh, on a number of private uh, times of communications that there is a, not a huge amount of money to spend. While Conte believes he is a few players away from what he needs. Matt Law has chimed in on, uh, on this saying, Tottenham offer Antonio Conte one million a year pay rise to sign a new deal despite being offered a pay rise Conte will not rush into a decision and wants Tottenham to reaffirm uh, they share his ambition and also consider his family who lives in Italy so that is the latest according to the Athletic and the Matt Law of the Telegraph on the Antonio Conte situation very different uh, maybe to what we heard from Ali Gold uh, not so long ago saying yep. that but there is optimism that Spurs will um the Spurs will uh, reach a deal with Antonio Conte and that they can move forward uh, having struck that deal. Matt Law also goes on to say that Spurs are looking again at a right way, at a defender and a creative midfielder in January, so are looking for a couple of signings. Um, so, but looking at this uh, news, Brian, um, yep. when, we, when, it, when we talk about Conte not being happy that Spurs... Uh, maybe don't share his ambition, but apparently Levy saying he's made it clear from Conte from the start that you know this is how much money is going to be available, and you know, and he and he agreed to manage Tottenham on those terms. Is there fault on both ends? Is it? Would you say that um, Conte knew what he was walking into, so he shouldn't be upset, or would you say Levy knew he was who he was appointing, so he should be prepared to back him uh, to the required amount? Okay, so <clears throat> I am. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've, I've said for a long time now and uh, that there's something very fundamentally wrong at this football club. And the way I look at it, this club has lost all direction, all identity, everything. And it's not just Levy. The whole thing from the top down is just rotting away. Um, there is, it's like the left arm doesn't know what the right arm's doing. There is breakdown in communications all over the place. Um, Conte was promised when we, when we signed him a war chest... That war chest now apparently in private chats have been told uh, that uh, they're not there. Lie by Levy. Um, we were told last January that Conte was meant to have his meeting with Levy about the transfers, but he pissed off to the Bahamas. Lies by the club. And what was Paratici there for? Paratici is there to be that middleman. Um, I do not believe a single word that comes out of this club's mouth. The only person at the club that I believe is the guy that reads the team sheet because he <laughs> cannot get it wrong. Everything else that comes out of this club, whether it be by uh, leaks, whether it be by sources, whether it be by the board, I don't believe a word of it. I don't trust Daniel Levy to tell me the time. Um, we all know, like with, like with Jose Mourinho, when you, this man wanted him as a pure vanity project... He wanted him because uh, he, he was the greatest and he wanted him. And he said, and he's, he's seen him throughout his career. And at two English clubs, you know his MO. Comes in, spends hundreds of millions, wins trophies, turns things toxic, 
leaves. Comes to Tottenham, doesn't get you, you don't give him what he needs to succeed. You have Poch, who was doing everything he could do to succeed, and you wouldn't back him. And when you bring Antonio Conte in, the man screams trophies. The man screams success. You back him. And I don't mean back him by 300, uh, 300 million every window. I don't mean go sign players for 150 million every time. But buy the quality he needs to get it done. And this is just another fundamental blue part by the parasite that is Daniel Levy. But is this not what Conte does um, in uh, in his previous jobs? He uses the media and leaks like this as leverage to the board to make sure that they're going to give him the required backing. So when we hear murmurings like this, do you think it's uh, Conte trying to put out this message so that the board are forced to act? Or do you believe it's genuinely, a, a, not a last straw, but genuinely like he's he's really threatening to, to leave his post uh, at this point? I actually think that £1 million extra payment that was Matt Law, did you say, was it Matt yeah. Law? Said it? I think that £1 million extra is to say, listen, you're not going to have the money to spend, but here's a million extra. I seriously think, and we know that Conte's not about the money. He's a, very, he's a man based on his principles. We've seen what happened at Inter. It wasn't about the money. Don't sell these players. These are my players. Nope, we're selling them. Goodbye. See you later. Um, I I just don't know what's going on with this club. I, I I really don't. I honestly think that million is. But like getting back to Conte and the media, yeah, he does it. But again, he does it successfully. Everything Antonio Conte has done in his career, both as a player and a manager, he has done it successfully. But what I'm saying is, it, when when Conte, when you hear leaks like this, uh, probably from the Conte camp or sources close to it. Is it not in Conte's interest to to say this kind of thing rather than say, yeah, I'm really happy and um, I'm I'm happy with the the funds available and all this kind of stuff? Is it is it not in his interest to say, you know, look, I, I I'm not happy. I'm I'm all yep. these kind of things. I'm uh, I'm actually um, wanting um, putting pressure on the board. Is it not his interest to put out the feelers even though he might be maybe happier than? He's letting off. He could be. I mean, four weeks ago, he seemed very happy and we were very optimistic. The contract's getting done. January's going to happen. We're going to bring in these players. He's going to get backed. And then that was when a World Cup was going on and uh, everyone wasn't focusing on Tottenham. And now the focus is mainly back or solely back on everyone's Premier League team. This breaks. Um, I, I, I honestly, I, I think what Conte's doing, he, 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 I'm sure he's got a part in this. Don't get me wrong. He, he's not whiter than white in this, but... If you look at it, based on the history of our football club, um, managers, when they've been promised things by Levy, have never, ever got them. Mm. Ever. So why shouldn't he? And I said here with Ben, when you were on holiday, this will be the manager that will everything will come out. It will all, whether it works, brilliant success. If it doesn't work out, we're going to know why. Because Antonio Conte doesn't pack punches. Oh, sorry, he does pack his punches, and uh, we will find out. But let me read you um, this this paragraph from the article, which was released by The Athletic um, uh, this morning. Um, it says, um, maybe this particular moment will be like... Uh, sorry, it says, uh, the first thing... It says, so how worried should Spurs fans be about these neg negative noises? He says, the first thing to remember is that we've been here before. Seven months ago, there was speculation about Conte, uh, whether Conte would leave at the 21-22 season. He was even given the opportunity every single week to kill the speculation and commit his future to the club, and he never did. The speculation was in his interest. At the very end of the season, the word was still that Conte was as likely to go as he was to stay. And then after the season ended, Conte ended up staying. Maybe this particular moment will be like that one. Complaints will be made on Conte's behalf. The word will go out that Conte is not happy, that the club's ambition does not match his own, that maybe he would be better off somewhere else. Conte understands the politics perfectly. He knows that he has the leverage in this relationship that Levy needs to keep him happy rather than the other way around. Yep. And that Levy will always have to have at the back of his mind the fans' reaction if Conte does walk. For Conte to admit that he was, that he was happy and relaxed about the club's plans going forward into the transfer window would him would be for him to gift that leverage away so so you, you you've you've got to look at this um so is he would if he was to if the feeler if we were hearing the noises right now saying conte is happy he's uh happy with the the plans going to this window and he thinks that we're gonna have a good window and he's happy with the state of the squad would that not 
give away his leverage that he currently has with the fan base and and uh, against Levy. No, it would it would do. I, I, I'm with you on that. But you look at it right now. This is this is the point where you look at it. Chelsea have gone and signed and Cuckoo. All right, it's for June, but deal done. You've got all these other clubs coming back that are going to strengthen. We know Newcastle are a major threat with their resources. Man City will do their bits. I'm sure Arsenal will back, which they have been doing recently, even though the filth have been going on about Kroenke. You can't deny what he has been doing for Arteta. Um, and you look at us right now, where it's not just even Conte's contract, it's Kane's contract. It's not just Conte and Kane's contract. It's do we get these players in? It's what happens with Paratici through January. It's just once again this club that apparently plans... There's apparently a very well-run business that does everything right and has a, a set plan. Every single time it comes to transfer window, somehow this plan starts to unravel. And it's just it just happens every single time. And we've got a huge... Th- you look at it, like I said, you, you can add Lloris. We need to find Lloris' replacement. Son is getting older. Do we need... Cont- I, I, I honestly think as well, if Conte goes, this job is going to be under Levy like the Poison Chalice, like the England job. No one's going to bloody want it. We are we this is I I but like like you said when it comes to this uh, the article you you're right Conte I I would I would keep doing what Conte's doing I would keep doing what Conte's doing listen he is our last chance of genuine success mm. any manager we get after him he knows as well is a downgrade regardless whoever comes in is a downgrade um, we are in a mess aren't we really well I wouldn't say or, well, or we are allegedly. We could be in a mess if, if if he turns out to leave. I would say right now we're still in a fairly good position. I don't think right now we're in a, we're in a mess yet. Conte's still here. The squad is still in a decent place. But it's kind of it kind of feels like it's built on a house of cards. Correct. Like a crumble that, at any moment. Completely. You're right. But it's still... We are, like, in the bigger picture <coughs> uh, side of things... We're like, if you look at every, if you look at where everything is, like we, the squad is okay. It just needs more, just needs a few more investments. It doesn't need that major overhaul. Nope. It needs some investments. We're fourth in the Premier League, and we know only a couple of points behind uh, Newcastle in third. So we're decent. We're in the Champions League round of sixteen. Yep. But what really discourages me is when I hear things from um, from the Athletic saying Levy has been clear with Conte that there's not a huge amount of money to spend. It's like, why? There is no reason why there shouldn't be lots of money for Tottenham to spend with all the events we have going on. We have sellout crowds every week. Uh, We have money coming out of our ears from from beer sales and all this kind of stuff. We are... um, we have uh, on match days we earn the most I think of anyone in the Premier League um, uh, in terms of ch- we're in Champions League at the moment yep. uh, and we're in round of 16 um, I don't understand why there wouldn't be loads of, like, plenty of money right now uh, like financially we're very stable Yep. Um, there should be no reason why Tottenham won't, shouldn't be able to push the boat out a bit if they wanted to, and I, I don't, I don't get this excuse. There's like, like we're acting like we're still this Tottenham that uh, ha- that, the, that the stadium was being built and we had all this money. In- I mean, obviously the stadium has been built; we have to pay it off. Yeah. But they're acting like it's still the Tottenham of 2008, Co- and, and, and and it's still like you know we have to sell to buy and um, you have to balance the books and all this kind of stuff. And I understand you have to be, you can't be, redi- you can't be stupid financially. But there is no reason why, if Tottenham are convinced on a player and he costs this much, he shouldn't be able to pay that much. It's not just that. I mean, like you said, with all with all these uh, other avenues of income coming in, you look at it, and like Ryan Isaac said, our good friend, um, if you look at it right now and you said, we're three points off Manchester City, we're in the Champions League knockout stages, that's reason to be optimistic. We've got a very, very elite manager... We've got one of the greatest strikers to ever play the game in Premier League history. We've got a great nucleus of a, of a, of a, <coughs> a building of a team. You've got all these NFL boxing concerts, the, the match day revenue, the, the Spurs shop, the, the, the sleeve sponsors, the training sponsors. There's money coming into that club and to constantly hear... You remember that interview he did, that, that, that very... Uh, uh, on Tottenham Hotspur TV when he, when he came out and he said all money that goes back that gets put into the club or the club makes goes back into it. Well, we're not seeing it, are we? We're, we're not seeing it at all. And you but, think, it, but it was so different to what we heard in the summer. 
it, this it all listen what i will say is myself obviously being the most prominent one on, on your channel that's been leave you out and uh and uh goes on any channel to, and, and twitter anything i can get my hands on just mm. to say leave you out i've been saying this for a long long time as long as i've known you guys um and a lot of people are now starting to feel the same way but beforehand obviously it wasn't and it's like i keep saying these things I don't want them to be true. There's nothing more, Simon, mean, I'd love to do than be on this update with you saying we smashed the bank, we've broken records, we're now... Do and I'll, I'll be the first one to go, do you know what? Well done. Well done. But it's not happening. And we hear... I, like I said, I don't trust Daniel Levy to tell me the time. Um, it's one story. We, we went into this World Cup optimistic that... He's coming. The links, obviously, they're, they're links a nice case, but we're going to back him. He's going to get his creative midfielder. He's going to get a, a central defender. And now, all of a sudden, we have no money. And then, obviously, these transfer rumours are coming up and we're going to be discussing one. It's like, well, where's the money for that then? We well, don't say there's no money. It's just not going to be a huge amount to spend, he says. Well, you get in today's market, for what we need, because we have neglected certain areas for so long, we need quality. We haven't got time to say, oh, Joe Rodon, come back from Rennes or mm. next season, you've got... We need players that come in and be like, right, off we go, that's a player. That's a player that will come in, do the job, and let's just, let's just say, and I use this one all the time because I just like Skriniar. Skriniar comes in, you know what you're getting. It may be our only transfer if it was, and I'm not saying it is, but if we just went and bought Skriniar this winter or January, sorry, I, I'd be delighted because then we've spent the money on a player... That is genuine talent, not oh well, we'll see what he could be, or and that's where we are. Well, talking about potential future, um, maybe managers or uh, what's next uh, for Tottenham if Conte doesn't uh, stay. We got an update from Sean Walsh from 19 Men, and he claims Tottenham hierarchy are, are not unanimous in their backing of Antonio Conte. Some are board level, but prefer to go in another direction with Pochettino in charge. Maurizio Pochettino still has his heart set. Um, to return to, to, to THFC, believing he has unfinished business in North London, the Argentine still has plenty of admirers in the club. So the Tottenham board split on Conte, um, it says at the moment. Um, what do you make of that? Do you think that's true? Do you think there, there is a divide in the boardroom? And if, if Pochettino was to come back, would it, would, would it, would it be... Do you, would, you, would it be a case of him coming back in a on a downer and that's not really how you want his return to be so so first of all i have to say i, I i'm rich because my time machine works because we can talk about this for the 387th time um i th listen i love pochettino i uh, some of the best football i've ever seen in my life I'm with tottenham hotspur and the, the feeling around that ground was under the pochettino era was absolutely incredible um i love the man and i would welcome him back at tottenham anytime once daniel levy and enoch piss off I don't want him anywhere near. Um, of course, they're going to want Poch. Poch doesn't want to spend any money, or if he does, it's not major amounts. He does want youth. Um, and he won't give them grief like Conte and Mourinho does. Of course, the board wants someone that can go, yes, sir, uh, no, sir, three bags, full, sir. <laughs> uh, of, of course they do. I, uh, this, is, this is it. What, what, if they go back for Pochettino, what was the point of the last seven years? Or for however, how long has it been now? Five years? Since we let go of him. Yeah. Uh, 2019. 20, uh, three years, sorry. Three Bloody years. hell, is it only yeah. three years? Yeah, Jesus I know. It feels like Christ. a long time, doesn't it? <laughs> Jesus. Um, yeah. Um, what was the point of those three years? What was the point of sacking him to bring in Jose? There was no point. It was a waste and of time. Then, with every manager you've brought in, you've played a different style of football, so they've had to get different players in and different players out just to go back to the guy you wouldn't back in the first place. It just... Well-run business club. Um... Well, we're on football club. Um, I don't want him back. I do not want... I, I love him. Why would the Tottenham board not be unanimous in backing Conte? What has he shown to, to, in his results? He, like, first of all, he must be the best first year in charge of any Tottenham manager ever. Yeah. I don't think anyone's had a better first year in charge ever than Antonio Conte. So what could it, what could it be about what they've seen that wouldn't make them unanimous in wanting to back him? I just probably because they, they, you know just what? Because the money, I guess, I, they want to, the money is demanding. The money, and you know what it is? They've had it so like they've had it so easy. Like let's get into the top four, and uh, let's just be a nice club, and let's have the profits ticking over, ticking over, and we can build our skywalks, we can build our property, we can build whatever. Now they've got someone that wants to come in and talk about football. 
Now they've got someone whose sole focus mm -hmm. is football and winning. And now that they're not getting it, how... Oh, well, these other managers didn't want that. Kind of, they weren't that demanding. They didn't want this. They didn't want... These guys win trophies. The two guys you've had, the two huge guys that you've had in Conte and Jose, know more of what to do about a football club than Levy, Lewis, Cullen, all of them put together on the footballing side of things. And that's where they're not liking it. Because now they've got someone that's saying, hey, we're not a uh, property magnet that play football... We are a football team that you're bleeding to build property. Um, I really hope it's not true from what, what Sean uh, is reporting uh, for 90 Min, and I, it didn't, wouldn't make sense to me. Um, maybe it's maybe they're counteracting the noise from Conte, putting pressure on the board, and the board is responding, saying, "Look, we, you know, they, it's kind of like a counter counteraction to the pressure to the to the leverage Conte is playing. Maybe they're t trying to take some leverage away by saying, look, we can just get Pochettino back, and uh, the fans would be just as happy or something like that, and um, and we could and would be fine in that situation. Maybe that's that's the feeler they're putting out when it comes to the." Um, kind of hinting at uh, Poch's return maybe they're trying to take some of that leverage away which would make sense but I, 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 like, I don't understand how they can see how we've played for the first year or, or uh, yeah it's only been a year hasn't it yeah came in November, November or just over a year and why they wouldn't be unanimous in in um because, like, the, who's to say Poch comes in straight away and, and, you know, it doesn't take him time again to get his squad and and, and uh, his players available? And who says he's going to be an instant success but just because yep. he knows the team? He's, he's going to want his players. He plays in a very specific way. So it wouldn't make sense to me to... Uh, it wouldn't make sense to me at all to bring Pochettino in just after a year, after 18 months of Conte because you want to go in a new direction again, even though Conte has proven that... He could work with the tools that you give him, and if you just give him better tools, he can work wonders. Uh, you, you've got to remember as well, um, since Daniel Levy did that stadium uh, address, or sorry, the programme address at the end of the season at the Villa game, and he said, we're going back to Tottenham's playing the forward attacking progressive football that we are, we've made our name being. He's hired Jose Mourinho, the exact opposite of that. Nuno, the exact opposite of that. Ryan Mason hasn't had time to, to, to put down a marker of what kind of footballer or, or brand of football he wants to play. And Antonio Conte. Which is four managers, none of them that fit that profile of what he said. Um, and then you bring Poch back, who will do it. But Poch, who plays a 4-2-3-1, you've got a manager that's been playing a 3-4-3. And the players, are, we're going to be going around in that loop again. And then you've got the ones for the future in Destiny Aduji who are signed for Conte. Mm. Another one for the future that won't be get, getting to play under the manager's uh, formation that he wanted because we just keep going from different ethos to different ethos. It's, it's, it's a joke. Well, let us know in the comment section below what you uh, think of this whole re the reports about Antonio Conte and that situation. I want to know what uh, your thinking is. It Conte using his leverage or their serious doubts whether he'll stay. I want to know your opinions in the comment section below. Moving on now to a report out in Italy from um, Calcio Mercato. It says Antonio Conte wants to sign Brighton midfielder Alexis McAllister in January, who would cost around thirty million pounds. Uh, moving and putting Conte aside. Yeah. Uh, and all, the, all that kind of stuff and whether we'll buy him or not. Alexis McAllister, he played obviously quite well for Argentina in the World Cup. Yep. Um, plays in a centre midfield position, creative midfield position, which we're looking for. Is he a someone you'd welcome at Tottenham? I, for one thing I will say, though, I think that £30 million was pre-World Cup. I think that money, that, that's if not doubled right mm. now. Um, <laughs> and we know Brighton, how they, they held out for Ben White and everything. They, 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 won't, they will hold out for the money. Um, this season, I, I, I've really, really liked the look of him for for Brighton before before uh, Potter left for Chelsea. Or remember that banger that he scored against Leicester that was wrongfully dis or rightfully disallowed, but ridiculously for that. And he has been very impressive. And then he, w he went to the Argentina's team and he started off on the bench. But he the last few games he was instrumental for them, wasn't he? He's a He's a very, very good player, and he's something. I, I remember I said to you that when we were doing the watch along that when you did the poll a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. I was kind of like, no, I don't want him at Spurs. I would take him at Spurs, but I'm gonna stick to what I have been saying. Is uh, I don't want to hear anything about midfielders or attackers. I, I want defenders this January. Um, but he is a player 
that I think is a very bright future and I would welcome a Tottenham. Yeah, I, I think in terms of midfield, I do believe he's the profile that we need. I think um, the, the way he glides past players, his vision apart, uh, around the game, I think he has... Um, he's already starting to explode a bit, but I think if you get him now, you're getting him just before he maybe hits those um, kind of peak performances right now. I think he's playing very well for Brighton. Still slightly inconsistent, but you know we saw what he did in the World Cup. He's really starting to get those consistent performances into his game. And I think if we were to get him now, we'd be getting him at the right time. Because I yep. think in a year's time, he's going to be probably you know, a lot more expensive. The only, the only thing I'd ask you, Simeon, is where do you see him in a Conte team? Because I don't think he sits. He, he sits I think he could. Three. He could, I think he could play in the three four three. I think he could play in the double pivot. Um, maybe against teams where you're looking to dominate the ball more. Okay. Not necessarily teams where like a like a top six team. I wouldn't want him in the top against for a top six team. You probably want him in a three five two. Yeah, that's what I would say. But he does play for Brighton in a deeper role. Oh, he uh, does? A lot of time in a pivot. He can. He has done that role. Okay, so times. there's flexibility. So he's definitely flexible play. He's done that role before, so it's not alien to him. And let's face it, but, but having a World Cup champion, uh, what is he, 23 or something yeah, at the moment? And that. he's like, pff, fair play to him. Fair play to him. He's had a wonderful season. And he's had a great, yeah, great season for Brighton yep. as well along the World Cup. So, yeah, he'll be a vet of interest. And last but not least, Fabrizio Romano has been talking about Tottenham and he says Tottenham are one of the clubs who have scouted Piero Hincapié from a Bayer Leverkusen. Obviously, he was um, part of the Ecuador team of the World Cup playing at left centre-back um, and he showed a lot of composure. He was very impressive in the group stages. Obviously, they didn't make out, unfortunately, due to their last final game loss to Senegal. But he was one of the standout players for Ecuador. He's had a brilliant season so far for um, by Leverkusen. And he kind of fits the bill for us. Left-footed, can play on the left side. He plays left-back sometimes as well, so not alien to getting forward as yeah. well. Very comfortable on the ball, very strong. 20 years of age as well, so very, so young and high potential, high ceiling. And these are the kind of defenders we should be looking at. This is a player I'm very interested in. Very, someone spoke to me about him. I can't remember who it was, about eight months ago, a year ago. I didn't know much about him. So I started just having a, a little look at him and it was liking what I see him. But I think he was very good at the World Cup. And this is the kind of... That I'd love to see him at Spurs. I, I think he could be uh, a real, real smart piece of business if we could get this over the line. I really do like what I see. Like I said, to get, he has the option to play left back as well, should we need. Um, so yeah, that's a, another bit of flexibility. I, 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 would, I would really be interested in seeing him at the at White Hart Lane. All right. Well, that is all we have for today's Tottenham Up There. Let us know in the comment section below anything to discuss anything um, that we've talked about today. Let, let me know in the comment section below. If you want to see Brian, more of Brian, go check out Tottenham on tour Please on YouTube. Do. Please go check them out. Great Spurs content. Um, but thank you, Brian, for joining me My today. My pleasure. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. And as always, come, come on, you Spurs. Spurs.